Hi, I'm Maggie. Thank you for stopping by Crafts the Charm today. I'm so glad you're here. So in a recent video, I made some trees out of sisal rope. And I wondered if we could use the same technique to make some woodland creatures. So let's go have some fun. To start, we're going to cut lengths of this sisal rope. And I bought this at Walmart and I will include a link in the description. For these animals, I'm cutting three inch lengths. When I make the trees, I cut four inch lengths, but the animals are going to be trimmed back quite a bit more. I cut 16 three inch lengths for each of three colors, but I feel my animals could be fuller. So I would cut at least 20 lengths of each color. Once you've cut them, you're going to untwist them. With this rope, the rope can be untwisted into three pieces and then each of those pieces can be untwisted and then that can be untwisted. You want to get down to individual fibers. It may be harder right now while it's still kinky, but once you've soaked it, you should be able to continue to untwist it or unjoin it to get down to individual fibers. Once you've untwisted as much as you can, you're going to soak the fibers in water to straighten them out and this will only take about a minute. And once they are straight, you should be able to separate them a little bit more. You are occasionally going to have knots in the sisal or bits that are twisted around each other, and I just pull those out and discard them. We want nice straight pieces. Once your pieces are straight, we are going to dye them. Now you can use Rit dye for this, I'm just going to use some acrylic paint and water. And I was just wondering if I would be able to dye this white, so I did try some white acrylic paint mixed with water for the first set of fibers. And I did use quite a lot of acrylic paint here, and it definitely lightened the fibers. I wouldn't call the resulting color white. I have tried to bleach these in the past to remove color and I was unsuccessful. If you know of a way to lighten these and remove the color, do tell me in the comments. So to dye them, I do just mix the acrylic paint with a little bit of water, mix that up really well, and then put the fibers in and move them around, try to get the paint through all of them because really we're just painting them, and then wring them out and set them on a towel to dry. The three colors that I dyed my fibers were this white, which is just an apple barrel acrylic white, black, which is apple barrel acrylic black, and I also did brown. I started with the apple barrel burnt umber, which is an acrylic paint, but I felt like it was too gray of a brown. I wanted my brown to be a little bit warmer, so I ended up mixing in some red paint, and the red paint that I had was this apple barrel bright red but I think any red paint would do. And I mixed that in until I got a warmer color and then dyed the fibers in that color. You can see that this process is very messy, even if you're trying not to be messy. So I would recommend perhaps doing this inside a larger basin or even a bathtub, wearing gloves as I am, and making sure you're not near anything that might get ruined if paint spatters on it. Now I let these fibers dry for two days and they still weren't completely dry when I worked with them. So you will see that I get a little bit of staining on my hands as I work with them, but they do continue to dry, particularly once you've made the animals out of them and they don't stain your fingers once they have dried. Now I made the bear first, but we're going to start with the squirrel-ish thing because this is the easier animal to make. I had used some of the brown on the bear, so I didn't have a lot of brown left, maybe about half of it. So the squirrel is a combination of brown and white fibers. So to make these animals, we're going to use a drill, this four strand, 20 gauge multi-purpose wire, but you can use any stiff wire. And we're going to need a set of pliers. So the first thing we're going to do is cut a piece of the wire and straighten it out as much as we can. Now for the squirrel, my wire is about 18 inches long. Insert one end into the drill as if it were a drill bit and tighten the drill down. And then separate the wire into two even pieces, 
because this is four strands, I just separate it into two strands each. And you're going to lay one strand down on a flat surface and push the other strand backwards out of the way. Then you're going to lay your fibers along the strand. So I used all of the white and what I had left of the brown, which was maybe half of the brown. And what I decided to do was give the squirrel a brown face and a white body, and then mix the white and the brown for the squirrel's tail. So the body and the tail are about the same size, and the face is smaller. I separated the fibers again as I laid them down because they had clumped together a little bit with the painting. Once you have them all laid down evenly across the wire, you're going to press down the top piece of wire that you had separated, and you're going to hold the ends gently with the pliers. I twisted the ends together a little bit because this is a lot of fiber on here and I didn't want it slipping out. You then lift the drill and the pliers off of your surface far enough so that when you run the drill, nothing will touch the surface and then run the drill slowly, holding the end gently until you have a nice tight twist of wire. And here's what it looks like to start. The tail, interestingly, seems to have almost stripes in it. So maybe this would be a good way to make a raccoon. Again, I wouldn't have chosen necessarily these colors, but this is what I had left. So the next thing you're going to do is basically just fluff your animal, separate the fibers, move them so that they're evenly distributed around the wire. Once it's all fluffed and you have a good idea of where the fibers are, then you're going to trim it. So I did not trim the tail very much at all. I wanted the squirrel to have a big fluffy tail, but the body and the face, the head, I did trim quite a lot. And you can just use regular scissors for that trimming. And once I had it trimmed pretty well, I then bent it so I wanted to bend it so that the tail was taller than the body, so that it really did look like a squirrel sitting up with the tail up against the body and then curling back a little bit and with the head curling forward a little bit. And once I had it in the sort of shape that I wanted, I then trimmed it a little bit more. Now to give the squirrel its features, I'm going to use this pine cone, which I found for his ears and his feet and I'm going to use a wooden bead for his nose and I'm going to use black seed beads for his eyes and I am just going to hot glue those into the squirrel. For his arms, I'm going to use a bamboo skewer. So I just cut two lengths of the bamboo skewer. I painted them with the burnt umber acrylic paint, and then I hot glued them in. And I had an acorn that I had found, which I coated with Mod Podge. And I hot glued the acorn into his little paws.
Now the bear is a little bit more complicated because I wanted to give him arms and legs. So I cut two lengths of the wire and these are approximately 10 inches long and the same process, put one length into the drill, separate it into two pieces, lay one piece down on a flat surface. But then what I did was I put fibers um, on each end of that, but I left a space in the middle and this is going to be for the bear's arms and you know, lift that off the surface and spin it. And then I did the same thing again for the bear's legs. Now I ended up really not having enough fiber for the bear, so I didn't use enough fiber for the arms and the legs. So you'll see how I amended that. So when I made the bear itself then, I cut a length of wire that was again about 10 inches, not super long. I laid down some brown on the wire for the bear's nose and black for his body. And then I put the arms and the legs across the wire along with the fibers for where I felt the arms and the legs should be. The legs are quite close to the bottom. And then lifted it off the surface and spun it. And <laughs> what I was left with was pretty hilarious looking. Uh, but we are going to turn this into a bear. So the first step is fluff and trim. And that's what I did at first. Getting it down into more of a bear shape. And I decided that the feet just didn't extend out as far as I wanted. Um, so what I did was I took some more of the brown and I made little feet, uh, same process. And then I just got uh, untwisted the wire enough so that I could get down to where the fibers were and then untwisted his leg wires as well, trimmed off most of them, but used one wire from the brown from the foot and one wire from the leg and twisted them together to attach that. But if you're making this, um, you know now to make the legs long enough and you could put a little bit of brown at the end of them um, and then you wouldn't have to go through this process of making separate feet. That was just because I felt the legs weren't long enough. So I thought the little brown feet were pretty cute. And now we just need to finish him off, give him his features. I'm going to make the bear's features out of felt. So I cut some black felt and brown felt for the bear's ears, and I just hot glued those together. So I just put a little brown on the inside of the black. They're basically rainbow shapes. And then I hot glued those to the bear's head for his ears. I gave him a little black oval for a nose and little black circles for his eyes. And those are all just hot glued on. The black oval for the nose is hot glued over the tip of the wire. That's the top of the thing that we spun. I also, there is wire at his, where his tail is, basically where the legs attach. And I made a little tail for him out of black felt and just put that over that wire end to hide the wire end. These are not toys because they do have sharp wire parts. So even though um, I'm doing my best to cover up the wire, um, I, I wouldn't give this to a child to play with because there still might be bits of wire that are sharp that are sticking out and we certainly wouldn't want anybody to get hurt. So with the hands, I untwisted the wire, trimmed it off, bent it back into the bear, and then I made him some felt paws. The felt paws are uh, basically an oval of black felt with little brown toe beans on them. I was only able to fit four. I have no idea how many bears have, probably more than four. 
and I hot glued those to the front of the bear's arms. And then I just had this little pumpkin from the Dollar Tree, and I just put that in the bear's arms. Because he's wire, you can have him grasping things. So for the holiday season, I might give him something else, a little present or a little candle, something more wintry. And here they are. So, what did you think of our little woodland creatures? Did you have a favorite or maybe an idea to make a different creature? Please tell me in the comments. They were fun to make. Undoing the sizal is a little bit tedious, but once you get to trimming and shaping, they're really quite fun. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you enjoy this sort of content, please subscribe to Crafts the Charm. Thank you for spending time with us today. Take care.